Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, Let's turn, turn tragedy, tragedy to, to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choate. Welcome, everyone, to the Thriving Marriage Podcast. I'm here with Mark Johnston. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing great. How are you, Heather? I'm doing well. It is a really rainy, cold day here in Colorado, so I'm crossing my fingers that the connection works well because it seems like every time there's a lot of rain, we have really bad internet. Um, And all the rain made me really sleepy this morning, so I'm going to try to bring the energy. But honestly, I would love to just crawl back in bed, (laughs) to be completely honest. (laughs) So... All right. So today we're going to be, um, I'm still honored to be here and really um, love this topic today, which is creating a unified vision for your marriage or your family. Mark, just right off the bat, give us a little um, intro about what this this means to you to create a unified vision for your marriage and your family. Actually, I was really glad to be able to talk about it this week because I, I do think that Heather sometimes, you know, especially given the kind of marketing and audience that we have tended to create, we tend to talk a lot about problems, how to, how to solve a lot of problems. And so this is much more about growth than just simply eliminating problems. That's why I like it. But um, here's the thing. like the, I, I feel like marriage should be a kind of relationship where each partner feels like a better person because of the relationship Uh, and, you know, or a little bit like uh, being part of a, like as you're part of a team, each are able to be more individually than if they were separate. Um, And, you know, especially, you know, with a lot of you, uh, you know, when your marriage starts to bring each other down or starts to restrict, it can quickly turn into this, situation where neither of you really feels healthy or where you partners start to consider whether they would be better off apart. And the reason why I bring this up is because quite often uh, what takes people in the other direction is, you know, instead of each being torn down or being less, having some sort of unified vision, something that you're, um, growing on with together something that you're working towards together uh, has tends to have the opposite effect and so that's what we want to talk about today is how to actually have this unified vision how do you actually have this sort of situ- um you know what what would you actually need to talk about with your spouse in order to have more of this growth mindset or the uh, mentality here so yeah, that's roughly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to support each other in your unique goals, how, you know, what it might mean when someone says that they need to find themselves um, and really steps to create a family vision and work together as a team. Yeah. So last week we had talked about um, dealing with powerlessness. And then today we're talking about how to create a unified vision and specifically for your marriage, for your family. However, I still find this really beautiful timing with what's going on in our world today where there are really a lot of different opinions and um different (laughs) views of looking at the challenges that we're facing here in the united states and as you know as a global community and how do we work together with people that see things so differently can is that even possible right because we know that when we just kind of dig our heels in and they dig our heels in, then we're really just at odds against each other and nothing really productive ever is accomplished but is there a way that we could find that kind of common ground or even support each other in our different needs and our differences and really creating some unity together um, not only as a couple as a family but you can even apply these things on a broader scale as cultures, as nations, and as a worldwide humanity, um, that we could apply these same principles to creating some unity and some harmony. It uh, doesn't mean you're always going to see it the same way. And I don't think we are supposed to. I think we're actually meant to have our differences. We're meant to have our different perspectives because that brings um, 
freshness and and just more you know richness to the experience than if everyone saw the same, the same you know the same thing exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to share this today, as well as the path method that we use, even when marriages are, you know, really struggling or their major challenges. I use these same principles in my marriage now, even though my marriage is very strong and very solid, we still have those differences. And so I use these methods to make sure I'm not pushing and make sure that I'm open and understanding and that we work together as a team. So we'll get into that. But before we do, we're going to go to our client win of the week. This comes from permission with Sherry. She says in her post here, the best advice was path, which we were just talking about. P, get perspective, your spouse's, not yours, of why they feel they cannot be happy with you. A, make personal adjustments based on their perspective. T, tell a new story, crack the false narrative. H, give your spouse hope that they can actually, that they actually can be happy with you. I love that she is breaking down her acronym and knows it through and through. So awesome job, Sherry. She says, worst advice, they cheated, you need to get a divorce. P.S. Love you, Heather and Mark. Take me out of the running. Oh, because we give a, a, a giveaway in this. I already know what this program can do, and I want as many to benefit as possible, especially those who need it and can't afford it. Reconciliation is going very well. God bless you always. So um, thank you for sharing this, Sherry. And we're grateful that we have the opportunity to give some steps here that are so needed. I know for me, um, when there were major challenges in my marriage, it was overwhelming and confusing, and I just had no idea what to do or where to go. So I thank you for sharing this path method with everyone, and I'm truly honored that we're able to have a part in your journey there. All right, so let's dive into this, Mark. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I still feel like I'm trying to warm up, honestly. I don't know if it's coming across, but I'm like, words, you know, like. I, no, I know what you mean. Like, I, I, feel, I don't know what it is. I feel a bit off myself today but you know we'll, we'll get through this you know i think we should uh, just give ourselves some grace too because there's just uh, so uh, much going on seriously there's just so much going on and that like just the the energy and the focus on not only our own lives our own relationships but just everything going on in our culture and our world um it's just a lot to take in sometimes and sometimes we just get exhausted <laughs> let's be honest but we're still grateful to, to be here. And so we will get into the groove of this. We will tap into it and, and hopefully everyone will come away from this with something positive. So yeah, here's the thing is, uh, you know, just diving right in, people, surprise, surprisingly enough, people have goals. <laughs> Most people have some something motivating them. Even, you know, I would even say people who appear as though they don't have goals, I uh, really have some sort of motivation. You know, you might look at the, say the, the, the drug addict or the people who are really down and out on their luck and say, okay, well, they're, they don't have goals. They don't have any motivation here, but they do. It's just, it just happens to be maybe towards make, you know, having a peaceful life, making sure that they don't have problems, having a lot of calm and comfort. Um, maybe they're, they're looking for a, a sense of security, or maybe it's just, you know, they're motivated by having fun experiences, experiencing new things. Uh, you know, other people are a little bit are motivated by other things. I know, like, my wife is really uh, goal-oriented. She's a very um, motivated person, and I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm a little bit more on that other end, and I, I like to have my comforts, and I like to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the one in the family that kind of drives the family towards having some fun and being able to relax and making sure that those are really great experiences. So what I'm getting at here is that everyone has some unique goals, uh, a, a vision for how they want their life, um, maybe even how they want their marriage to go ideally. Uh, and I think I think that an ideal marriage is one where there is plenty of support for each partner to meet their goals together. So as I was putting together this material here, I thought, you know, it would be a good idea, Heather, to, you know, kind of run through our own relationships a little bit in this regard. Uh, so I had a set of questions <laughs> and I thought we would maybe go through this a little bit, you and I, um, 
and discuss this. Now, that's not the entirety of everything, but I thought that would be a good way to start off. Yeah. So, Heather, what are some of the unique goals that you have that you bring to your marriage? Yeah, and you know, when we were talking about doing this podcast, I think a couple weeks ago, we were talking about, this is something that you and I, like with our spouses, um, we do really well. <laughs> like, I think that we, we've we got this, this is one of our strengths. And so um, rather than trying to hide that light, I think it's important that we we share what's worked well for us. And I would be really forthcoming and say that it hasn't always been a strength, right? We're tested through failure, we're tested through trying again and again and again until it becomes more of a strength. Um, and I think as a company, you and I, we have vision and we have goals and we have a mission to create some radical changes um, about marriage in the world and to save millions of marriages and millions of lives and help improve them. And that really motivates us and drives us. I've always been a very goal oriented type person, right? A very driven type person. Um, and I really have felt like I don't want to just let life happen to me, but I want to be the master of my fate, right? The captain of my ship. And I want to know where I'm going and I will put in the work and I will do what it takes to get there. But life throws us some curveballs sometimes. And um, we, face different challenges and face different storms that can take us off course. So that's why it's really important that we hold fast to that vision. My personal goal is honestly to find truth in my own life and to uncover any untruth that I believe believed about myself or believed about others or believed about the world. Because whenever I'm living one of those limiting beliefs, then it always creates um, pain or stagnation or some kind of literally like a damnation. It's like putting a dam in my own way so that I can't progress. And progress is to me what it's all about. So it's healing some of those internal things so that we can experience growth and happiness. That's that's really the goal, right? <laughs> happiness. So I, I'm liking as you're describing this, Heather, you seem very, very certain about what you want. I mean, you're kind of using in somewhat some some general terms, but I you know I get a sense that you know very much what you want uh, out of life, and uh, like yeah. that vision is very in all areas. Yeah, yeah to so, in it, all areas of life. <laughs> I think this is this is one of the the important pieces here of having a unified vision within within your relationship is being able to have a clear sense of where you want to go with things. Yeah. Uh, for for me, within uh, for myself, yeah, you know, I, I think you know. Of course, there are goals in different areas of life. Uh, I know for my family, it's highly, highly important to me that I create the kind of family atmosphere where uh, me, my wife, uh, my children can feel connected. Like we have a good, strong relationship that we enjoy being around each other. Uh, and, you know, I, I think even a lot of even my professional goals uh, even come back to that because I want to make sure that I can provide for my family such that, you know, things can be comfortable for them, that we can have these kind of nice experiences together. Of course, I mean, that's not the only reason, why, you know, why I, I have some of my professional goals. But I, I think in terms of like my own uh, goals for the family, that it certainly heads in that direction. And, you know, my, uh, my wife, Jen, and I, we, we talk about this sort of thing, like how can we make sure that we're going in the direction that we want to go? Uh, and this is just, you know, this becomes part of our everyday sort of uh, conversations. It's just it's pleasant to, to talk about these things and how to get there. Yeah. So, what are some of your, your, your and Jennifer's goals and how do you support each other? Well, I know... Uh, and that, see, this is a, a good question, especially for <clears throat> the group, because I think it's sometimes really easy to define our own goals. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, maybe maybe you haven't get an individual hasn't given thought to about it themselves, but they can go through a process. It's it's easy to get there and to, to kind of discover. Okay, what do you want? It's a little bit different when you now bring someone else into the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, Luckily for Jennifer and I, and we've gotten to this point where, like I said, this is kind of part of our everyday conversation. It's like what we want out of life. Uh, I know for for Jen, uh, she really wants uh, us to get to this point 
financially where we're able to say go and travel and you know see different interesting parts of the world we also have a very unified vision for our children uh, it's you know even though it's kind of pushed our uh, our some of our financial goals it's very important to us that we provide a very uh, solid experience for our children and growing up so we've been it's been a, a high priority for us to send them to a particular type of uh, uh, private school so you know we have similar goals in terms of you know family uh, long term kind of like where we want to be in life uh, and we kind of realized that to get there uh, we do need to focus quite a bit on our own personal growth and, and development so we have goals for, for those sort of things as well what about you? Yeah, uh, I know, I know you and Ben. Your lives have kind of changed uh, quite a bit over the years. I, like, if I remember correct, Ben just recently, you know, within the last few years, uh, made some career changes, uh, became a pilot. Uh, I mean, yeah. What what kind of goals do uh, does Ben have, or that how how have you you and Ben been working through those sort of things? Yeah, so there was a point right with um, where we just got kind of honestly, both of us got a little bit complacent in <laughs> in our lives, and I think that that happens and that's normal. Um, we can get complacent in our marriages, right? If we're not actively working on things, and we can get complacent in what drives us and our career path, um, even with our children and different things like that. So it's something that we kind of need to know where where we ideally want to go. Um, and then recalibrate, right? Recalibrate, recalibrate and be like, okay, we've gotten a little off here or we've gotten a little comfortable. And, and so we need to be aware of that with Ben, his primary need is, um, comfort. And I think I've shared that here on the podcast before, whereas I believe that my primary emotional need is growth and those can kind of be at odds <laughs> with one another. So sometimes I'm trying to push us, right? Push here, bring up the path method, right? To do things. And then I get resistance or kickback from him. And so there were times when I would try to push us and then I would just get this like feeling of I'm pulling away. I need to feel kind of safe. And so he, he honorably, I would say stuck with the career of working in auto body and even owning his own business, but it wasn't what he really loved to do. And he did that to support the family. And he just said, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, put my, my, goal my love of flight on hold so that i can take care of my family which i don't feel like is wrong <laughs> that's a good honorable thing to do and i appreciated him for that but then when we went through cancer we ended up selling the auto body shop moving our family seven hours up north to where his family lived and everything was suddenly wide open and his instinct was, I'm going to go back to auto body. I'm going to go do what I've been doing. And I know I can make a good enough living for my family. And for me at that time, I was like, you know, what? this is an incredible opportunity where we can kind of, we kind of have the slate wiped clean. Like we were wiped out financially. We're living in a camper trailer. <laughs> like, I'm like, you don't have to go back to that. What if we just did something completely different? What if you went back to flight school? And I'm like, we're already completely financially broke. So <laughs> what difference is it going to make? <laughs> like, it was actually kind of a huge gift in a way, because then we could be like, okay, so we already don't have money. So we might as well just not have money for a little bit longer and do what you really want to do. And as he did that, he really tapped into his passion and found some of that drive and, and was able to pursue that and loves flying. And he's teaching our 12 year old son now how to fly. And it's just awesome. He wants me to learn how to fly. Okay. I don't ever want to learn how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love and support him in flying and I will go with him, but I will never, ever be the captain. See here, I'm saying never, ever, which means it's probably going to happen at some point. Cause that's what always happens when you say never, ever, <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> but I support him in that. And when he wants to go fly, I know it just fills him up and it lights him up and he just relishes in it. And he'll tell me all this weird stuff, you know, about the altimeter and all these physics stuff and I just don't get any of it honestly but um I love that he loves what he does and he loves that I love what I do but it doesn't mean that we have to do it together and at one point I used to I I honestly thought we had to do like do something together like a business together or something um and I've let go of that notion because that only pushed him further away and it didn't really serve us so I don't know I, like if any anyone can relate to that or take anything away from that but i really feel like supporting your spouse in their goals makes them happy and when they're happy 
then it makes our marriage happier and I'm happy in return. And so then he supports me in turn. And it's just a beautiful cycle of, of support and love, even though we don't have exactly the same goals as far as our interests. Um, we support each other in those. And then we have a higher vision for our family. One of the best kind of advices, advices, oh my goodness, <laughs> advice that we received <laughs> was to have a unified vision and to strive to have harmony in our home. And so for me, I'm always like, is this a unified vision? Is this harmony? And if it's not, then how can we work together to get there? Now, Ben, you know, he, he wanted to become a pilot. I, I'm, I'm curious here where the support came in and like, did you have to push him towards that goal at all? Or did you, you know, was it more about just, uh, opening up the opportunity and letting him go with it. Yeah. yeah. He had some fear there. I think any of us, when we step towards what we really, our hearts really calling us to do or something that we would absolutely love. Sometimes there's that fear of, can I do it? Is it going to be okay? Am I going to be good enough? Am I going to fail? Like we run into those blocks a lot and it's easier to go back to our comfort zone. And so not only did I have to give him some permission, but yeah, I really encouraged it. And of course, where we have, you know, faith as a foundation of our marriage. So we prayed about it and felt unified and good about that decision. And then we just went for it. And it was really hard, just like anything, <laughs> actually. There's points where he wanted to quit. And um, he said, Heather, he was he was just failed a flight check. And they're only given so many times, I can't remember right now, that you can actually retake it. And it's really expensive, obviously. Flight school is not uh, a cheap route to go. And anyway, so there was a lot of pressure on him. He'd been working for months and months and months, gotten to a certain point, and then he failed his, his flight check for one thing. You cannot make like one mistake. It's it's literally like you're flying, so you got to be like really good. Our <laughs> pilot doesn't make mistakes while flying. <laughs> right. Exactly. So anyway, he at that point he was like, I I don't I think I'm done, and um and he was like, I'm gonna quit and my in instinct was more like, no, just keep going. Just keep pushing like Frodo, you can make it to the end. Like, you know, anyway, that's Lord of the Rings coming out in me. But um, I realized that, you know, at this point, I feel like I just need to support him. And so I actually told him the opposite and it felt right that if you want to, if you want to be done, I support that. And that kind of gave him the breathing room to say, okay, wow the pressure was off. Here we're talking about pressure again, right? I took the pressure off. He felt that the pressure was off. And then when the pressure's off, you can allow the things that you really want to come to you. It's a true principle. When we're holding on so tight, sometimes working so hard on our goals that we get in our own way, our like wantingness of it becomes such, so much tension. Um, so just kind of releasing that and letting it go and allowing it to be, then he's like, okay, I could, Heather's okay. I could, quit if I need to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so that was kind of part of that journey in supporting each other. It was different than I thought it would be. Yeah, for, for Jen and I, you know, we've had like a big, you know, just in creating this, this business here, uh, you know, I would say that a lot of uh, where I've gone with uh, creating the business with you, Heather, uh, it, it's happened because of the support from my, my wife. Jen, uh, I, I mean, it was <laughs> it was Jen that first uh, connected, say, you and I together with even the the notion of uh, having a business, and uh, also Jen, who was really encouraging and supportive of me as we were, you know, struggling financially to try and get this to a financially viable viable point. I so like I, I find it interesting. There's almost like there's like some different approaches here. Like for you, you were saying that taking some of the pressure off of Ben was very helpful and just, you know, giving a lot of permission uh, was really good. And to a certain extent, you know, I, I think I, I was receiving that, that from Jen as well, but um, a, a lot, a lot along the way uh, where I feel, felt like I was receiving a lot of support was just all, all the, appreciation and encouragement from from my wife Jen so like even when uh, I was working you know two other jobs besides trying to get this business going I uh, I didn't hear complaints from her I, I heard appreciation like mm -hmm. saying I appreciate Mark how 
how hard you're working for our family. And I know that this other thing is very important to you. It was a little bit of that giving permission, you know, that you're you're talking about. I but, think a lot of that understanding, right? Which is part of the path yeah. method as well is giving understanding. Um, I used to think honestly that some goals were worthier than other goals. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really learning how to let go of that, even with my own children. You know, my one son, he's like, I want to be a pilot. Like, dad, I'm going to go be a, you know, get my license when I'm 16. I'm like, yes. And my other son's like, I want to make marble tracks. And I'm like, that's good too. I'm like, you know, reframing the way that I see it. And so sometimes maybe um, we have a goal or what we feel like are good goals. And maybe our spouse has different goals. And we're like, that's not a great, like, Obviously, if it's unhealthy or destructive, that wouldn't be a good goal. But mostly, you know, those ones that are still positive in some way, just to support and to try to understand what it does for them. I know, Mark, you talked about, you know, like board games and then, you know, how you love those kind of things. And Jen loves, you know, law of attraction and, and talking about deep things. And so, you know, sometimes we don't always completely understand where they're coming from, but putting ourselves in their shoes and realizing what, what do you love about this? You can see the world through their eyes and that actually helps build more connection and intimacy between you. Well, I think that's been, those have been some of the most connecting uh, moments in, in my marriage is when there have, you know, maybe when maybe there's been a subject that doesn't necessarily interest say Jen or I, and we really try to, figure out why that uh, that world, that, that subject is so interesting for the other person. Mm -hmm. And I think it really can, you know, makes it so much easier to then support the other person in some of their, their goals. Yeah, and take any of the shame or like that's not good enough out of it, right? Just understand where they're coming from. Same thing that we always teach when your spouse is pulling away or what they're actually wanting. So how, you know, how do, have you handled times when maybe you didn't feel as supported? How did you get past that? You know, I think, you know, I, I'm trying to think back through my marriage to think of some times when I didn't feel as supported. I, and I've, I think I probably visited this in either a podcast or I know I've at least brought it up in, in session with, with clients at times. But I can think back when I was going through grad school and I was working um, a full-time job on top of that. And I, I had a few hours and then some other job as well. And then we just had our third child. <laughs> and so um, I, I was stretched pretty thin. And I, you know, I remember I kept thinking, okay, Jen, you know, she's not, she, she doesn't really care. Uh, it was kind of the thought that like, she's not doing things that really show, I, I can't remember the exact thoughts. Um, now, what was interesting was Jen also was feeling much the same way. She's like, okay, Mark's focusing on other areas. This was like kind of before she and I kind of had this uh, period where we really got much more interested in personal development and figuring these sort of problems out. But what ended up turning that around was when we were just very, open about about that uh, and willing to accept some feedback. And we were actually really both surprised that we each were not feeling care from the other person because we both felt we were working really, really hard specifically for the relationship, the family, for, for each other. It, and what it ended up uh, being is, you know, and I think this is the case in many, many relationships. I wouldn't say all, but in many relationships, there are probably many small things that are being done to try and support the other, uh, to support each other that are probably going by unrecognized. And that was what really solved it for us. Uh, we recognized that uh, we, we had this kind of, we, we started to develop this uh, assumption that each of us was trying to do our best for their relationship and for each other. Uh, you know, we had this unconditional positive regard, which is something I bring up in some of uh, our lessons. Uh, and then we started to be more vocal about it to help the to help each other recognize when we are trying to make some efforts. Uh, and even to this day, um, you know, I might be at the store and you know pick up you know, my, my wife's favorite drink, and I'll be like, I, I know you're having a hard day. I wanted to make sure that I got you something special. 
so that, uh, you know, things can be a little bit easier. You know, I'm doing this because I care about you. And, you know, just being very vocal about even small little actions like that. And we've gotten to a point where it feels not only good, it just feels natural to be expressive. It feels good to, to hear that from each other. Yeah. I think I got away maybe from the, the question, but like, yeah, there was going back to when we don't feel that, I think the kind of the bottom line is, is to be open to feedback, be op and be willing to share how you feel with your, your partner. Yeah, that's exactly the same thing that has helped me as well. Um, when I felt like, man, I'm just not getting a lot of support. I don't feel like he's really interested in, in, in me or in what I'm interested in. And so just sharing, you know, this is actually really important to me. Can you support me in that? Um, yeah. And so what is having a unified vision really all about? I think uh, there are some, a few really important things here. You know, we, we talked about being open and communicative, but I think in order to do that, I think it is very important to actually know what each of you want. Um, and, you know, a question I have for all of you is, okay, do you actually really know what you want out of life? I do think that many people coast. I think people I, uh, you know, I know I felt like that for a while. Like I knew that when I got out of high school, my parents expected that I go to college. I should probably choose a, a major, but you know, I, I had no idea how to go about that. The decision I ended up, uh, oh, I, I kind of laugh at my major choices. Um, but So I, I started off, everyone, as a musical theater major. <laughs> and then I, I changed to, to business, uh, to computer programming, and you can see like the big one. I, I was, you know, I, co I was coasting until I finally settled on psychology. Um, but I think actually taking time to figure out what I wanted at that point was immensely helpful. Like I, I, I went to the, the guidance counselor at the school and I said, I have no idea what major I'm. I'm supposed to do it. You know, they helped me kind of figure that out. And they said, okay, these, you know, here's some tests. Here's, you know, I'll ask some questions for you. And up at the top of the list was a, a few things, one of them being psychology. And I just, I really loved the subject. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is, you know, in terms of school, but I think the same applies to life. Right. To relationships. And I'm just going to throw out there for those who are struggling, like maybe I just don't even know what I want anymore. I don't even know, like, you're talking about goals and vision and you're so clear on what you want. Well, there's honestly times where I'm like, I don't even know what I want. <laughs> and I think that's normal. And sometimes we grow out of our past goals or our past vision. It's supposed to evolve and, and it's a continual process. Um, but there's a really powerful exercise that I'd be happy to send to everyone who's a subscriber. Um, and I'll send that out with the email with the replay. And so if you're not a subscriber and you want to become one, we give like exclusive guides and exercises and resources um, that we don't give to anyone else. And so you can become a subscriber at thrivingmarriagepodcast.com. And I'll send that out to you because it just goes through some questions that help your mind to open up and get clarity on, on what you want. And just a little bit of a teaser there, a little bit of a hint, starting with what you don't want is a great place. Because <laughs> when you know what you don't want, then you can get clarity on what you actually do want, right? Um, and then, yeah, we talked about speaking up for your own needs, your own wants. Even before we get into that, I, I'm I'm reminded here of um, what was for me a very influential. I don't know even know what to call it. Is it a speech? Are you you're familiar with this one, the yeah. the Stranger Secret by Earl Nightingale? It's epic. If you haven't listened to it, um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll say like out of everything, I think this has had you know out of all like the speeches and you know personal development things like this this one thing here, and you can find it anywhere. You can find it on YouTube, lots of different places. It's made a, a, a huge impact on how I, I view things. But in the spe speech that he makes, it's once again, it's Earl Nightingale, and it's the speech is called The Strangest Secret. Um, but I'll, I, just, I wanted to read a quote from this, uh, talking about goals. He said, think of a ship 
leave in a harbor and think of it with a complete voyage mapped out and planned. The captain and crew know exactly where it's going and how um, and how long it will take. It has a definite goal and 9,999 times out of 10,000, it will get to where it started to, to go. Uh, now let's take another ship, just like the first, only let's not put a crew on it uh, or a captain at, at the helm. And let's give it no aiming point, uh, no goal, and no destination. And we just start the engines and let it go. And I think you'll agree with me that if it gets out of the harbor at all, uh, it will either sink or wind up on some deserted beach, a derelict. It can't go any place because it has no destination and no guidance. And that's, you know, why I wanted to read that quote is just to really heavily emphasize the importance of knowing where you want to go in life, knowing what your vision is. And so you, you, had, you had some other question that I kind of sidetracked here. What were you oh, saying? No. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly what speaks to to the soul of the thing is that, you know, I love the visualization there of the ships and one just gets capsized or ends up, you know, just on some beach, right? <laughs> Derelict. Um, it can't go any place because it has, it has no destination and it has no guidance versus the one that maps out exactly where it wants to go. We talked about Ben being a pilot, but they always flight plan and they always determine their destination. and along the way, like 99% of the time, they're actually off course, which I think is an incredible analogy for life. Like we know where we're going, but most of the time we're actually a little off course and that's okay. It's not meant to be like this perfect, smooth, direct line. And there's going to be challenges and obstacles along the way. There's going to be weather that we need to plan for or comes up unexpectedly. Um, there's different winds or currents of life, right? There's all these different challenges. There might be mountains that we have to get over and different things like that. Or there might be bird strikes. <laughs> That's something that they're, they do experience. It's a real thing and it's actually kind of scary. But, you know, where random birds could come and just take you out. <laughs> and so, um, just knowing that it, that's where you want to go. And like I said, making those little calibrations here and there a little bit is what's going to help you along the way. If you're working to save your marriage and your spouse isn't on board with you, then you need to know where you want to go. What is your destination? What can you contr control here? And when you work towards that and you make those little course corrections here and there, you will ultimately get to the destination given time, <laughs> right? And as you stay true to that vision and don't just abandon ship. <laughs> so yeah, next we're gonna go into, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about this, but speaking up for your own needs, your own wants, um, and making sure that you're at a place in your relationship where you can, this is what we're saying, like we always need to make sure it's appropriate for your relationship. But even if your marriage is struggling, you can even say, you know, I really want to feel peace. I really want to work together for our kids. I really want to come away from this a better person. Is that something that we can work on together? And what are some of your needs? What are some of your wants? You want to, you know, have more fun. You want to have more freedom. You want to have more security, whatever the, the need there might be. Um, so how can I even help you in that vision? Can we work together on this? That's really when we get to, um, the, you know, the step there, hold out hope, working together on those goals, it does create intimacy and understanding and helps to restore trust as well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like, it sounds like this is kind of like a balance of speaking up for your own needs or being responsible for your own vision versus, you know, making sure that your partner can do the same and you, you're so taking action to support them. And I think that's where we kind of, uh, a lot of people might lose their way a little bit. They, they kind of say, okay, well, this is what I want out of life, out of my marriage. My partner isn't doing that for me. And so it's broken. The relationship is broken. And I, I don't, here, here's like the problem with that is at some point, there's going to be a misunderstanding. People aren't going to communicate well uh, or, Maybe your partner is struggling with something themselves, and if you are relying wholly on your your partner or your your spouse to, you know, fulfill that goal, that vision for you, I think you're on in a really shaky place, and you're bound to get 
to be disappointed at some point in your relationship, which in some cases can be very disastrous. I this is why you know I think it's so very important to to know where you're wanting to go, but also to make sure that you are the one. <laughs> that is responsible for your vision. And Heather, you said something very important, like even, you know, even if you're at this unhealthy place in your relationship, uh, you know, even if your part, uh, your spouse isn't really working on the marriage with you, this is like, this is something key here to say, okay, if I want peace in my life, if I want to have some calm in my life, and my spouse isn't going to provide that for me, what am I going to do? Is is a hugely important question for, for many people who are struggling in their relationships. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you had to, okay, or yeah, you just I agree. I kind of thought, and it's probably going a little bit off on a tangent, but I just thought a little bit about other, um, especially mothers, <laughs> that we can kind of lose ourselves in, in our children. We can kind of lose ourselves in our marriage. And so this whole idea of I need to make sure that I'm fulfilling myself, that I'm filling the well myself so that then I can give to my children and to my spouse and that I am actually the one that's responsible for that. You know, I don't know if other women especially can relate to this, but I grew up being loved and nurtured and and supported. Right. And then I went into marriage and you kind of carry that idea that now you're the support, you know, you're the person that's going to you know, support and, and nurture me. And they, and you know, ideally if it works out that way, great. But at the same time, there's a little bit of this, I think, transition where we let go of mother taking care of me and filling those needs, right? And now we're the nurturer and the provider and then who's filling us up anymore, right? And if we're looking to other people to do that at this point, then again, you're just going to be kind of a well run dry. And so being, aware of that <laughs> and um, acknowledging that and saying I am worthy and I'm good enough and I deserve this happiness in my life and it's okay giving yourself permission and building that into your life gives you that sense of fulfillment and joy um, and kind of the culture I was raised in the religious culture whatever if you did anything kind of outside of motherhood it was kind of looked down on <laughs> I don't know if anyone relates to that, but, um, and that you shouldn't really have a lot of drive outside of being a mother. And I'm a mother of eight. And I'm going to say, I need more than just motherhood to fulfill me. I do. And I've, it took a while to accept that and to put myself at first or whatever, but to just make sure I'm filling those needs so that I am not running on empty. So for any mothers out there or anyone else who relates to that, just, Make sure that you're doing that because otherwise you're just going to run yourself to the ground and it's not a good situation for anyone. But yeah. Uh, Jen and I talk about this sort of thing. And, you know, I'll admit, you know, even though I spent all day trying to like really hone in on what people are trying to communicate and trying to read people's needs and whatnot, I, I'll tell her I, I can't, I can't read my wife's mind. And, <laughs> uh, and I, I, I'll tell her sometimes I'm just going to be very dense and I really need you to tell me, uh, you know, if, if you need my support at times. Like if you're really struggling, you need to please let me know because I might be a little bit dense here and there. And, there. and you know, we, we, we've kind of gotten into the, this understanding um, and, you know, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, like making the assumption that we each want to provide support for each other. So we've gotten into like this good place where Jen will, you know, tell me, she says, I really need to, um, you know, take this class for my own, you know, my own personal growth and, and well-being. I need to be able to have this night out with my friends and I'll be like, okay, you know what? Great. I'm glad that you spoke up. I'm right there for you 100%. Yeah. It is. It's that it's that give and take. It's that balancing act. And then when life throws you some curveballs and some challenges, sometimes their needs are up and our needs, you know, then it's our time to be maybe more supportive of them. Uh, I know I definitely experienced that with Ben. There's been times where I'm like, I can't give. And I'm, I, you know, he has to kind of help fill in that gap there. And then there's times when he struggles and I have to kind of help fill in the gap. And so it's just that beautiful dance of life. <laughs> and it's hard. <laughs> it's not always really fun, but it is beautiful.
So I, I think I, I'd like to take this maybe in another direction because you know I, I know a lot of what we've been talking about is okay that personal responsibility speaking up, you know you specifically maybe supporting your spouse, uh, but I know a lot of our listeners, um, you know their spouse might be in maybe a dark place or it might be pulling away, um, they might not be wanting to take the time to figure things out. Like what if your spouse doesn't know what they want? I, you know, I have some thoughts on this, but I, I want to, you know, I just want to check you, <laughs> what your thoughts are here. Heather, I mean, have, have you and Ben gotten to this point where you're like, you feel like he does Ben doesn't know what he wants or you didn't know what you wanted. Yeah. I, I think we, we talked about that a little bit. Um, yeah. And yeah. again, just going back to the path method. If you are new to listening to the podcast, I'd really encourage you to go back and listen to those episodes um, because it's really the step-by-step process to be able to open up communication and gain perspective into what's going on there, taking the pressure off um, and then making some positive adjustments, right? And that's really how you can start if you're feeling really disconnected from each other, like completely, Mm -hmm. like we need to reconnect. They have different goals their goals are in opposition to mine. I've definitely felt that sometimes, sometimes <laughs> there's only so much time and resources, right? And if one person's like, I want to do this, and we're like, well, I don't know how we'll do that and do this, right? So what do we do then? And I really feel like it just comes down to trying to understand each other and, and working together on that. And knowing that sometimes it's okay not to know, as long as we're going to keep working on it. <laughs> I think like a big key with this sort of thing here, um, I I would agree, you know, our our path method is pretty good for these sort of things. (laughs) I I, I think, um, you know, what it comes down to, especially when, like you said, when there's opposing goals, it does come down to understanding and then compromise. I, I found that once I talk with a couple, and I really get down to the the nitty gritty of what's wanted. Um, somewhere along the line, there's a common goal. So, for instance, you know, one person might want to send their kids to private school, and another one, my the the other spouse might want to send them to public school to save save money. Um, you know, it, deep down, there are some some common goals there, uh, and I think where Oftentimes we are confused is people say we have opposing values or goals. What it usually comes down to is really you have different solutions or different means to what is probably a common goal. In most cases, like you say, private versus public school, it's really about, okay, you know, do we want to save money and do we want what's best for our kids? And I'm, I'm guessing that both partners want to save money and want what's best for their, their children. And so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, once again, that, that path method of like trying to get that understanding uh, and really getting down to basic goals and not getting stuck on the means or the sol- specific solutions, I think is a really good direction to go. Yeah. So we're running a little on time here. We're, we're about ready to wrap up. So I'm going to actually make our marriage myth buster, not maybe so much a marriage myth buster, but maybe more some clarification on some of the things we hear our partner say. So if their goal or what they're saying they want feels a little nebulous or feels a little confusing, such as I need space or I need to find myself. So sometimes we hear um, that our spouse says this and, and many of you in the group have said, my spouse says they need to find themselves and therefore they're leaving me. <laughs> so I want to shed a little bit of light uh, on what that actually means. So Mark, what yeah. do you think that that actually means? What yeah. No, I, I put this in here because I think it directly applied to the conversation today. Uh, and I, I, I think it comes down to a, a couple problems with what we discussed. You know, when I hear, someone say, I need to find myself, you know, I, what I'm hearing in the background is I don't have, I, I don't feel like I can speak up for my own needs mm-hmm. or I'm not sure what I really want uh, or I'm torn in multiple directions. And so I, I think, you know, that statement is coming about from not having all these healthy things that we've talked about in place. You know, 
it, I, I will especially, especially find this in some of those more uh, quiet spouses, the ones who really give and give and give. They, they find a lot of fulfillment in giving, but then they come to a point where they say, I've forgotten about myself. And if I speak up for myself, people complain. I, 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 that's where I most often hear this sort of statement. And so it, I, this is, you know, it's what it's really meant is I need to, I, I, I need to be able to meet my own needs. I need to be able to speak up for myself. I need to uh, figure out what I want and not feel guilty about it. So what and, makes the, the shift there from I need to find myself or I need to like work on myself more, I need to meet my needs to I feel like I need to leave the marriage to find those things. Well, it, it become it, it's, it's that, that connection there. Like I need those things. And if I ask for it, if I speak up, if I try to work on myself, I'm made to feel guilty. It's, it's maybe not accurate, but the conclusion that these people are coming to. Yeah. Right, is, you know, maybe, maybe you are trying to give support and they're interpreting it wrong, the, the one that's saying they need to find themselves. But that's that's the feeling. It's like I can't speak up for myself without feeling guilty. So then is the marriage like a roadblock or an obstacle potentially in their mind to achieve that? And so they feel yeah. like I can't do it in this situation. I need to leave the situation so I can go do that somewhere else. That's that's exactly the, the case. And so you'll find that over and over when people are separating, they say, I, if I stay in the marriage, I'm going to continue to not feel like I can speak up or feel heard or get what I want or be able to focus on my own needs. I, I can even recall talking to someone uh, the other day and their spouse is like, if I want to sleep all day because I'm feeling depressed, I want to be able to do that. And mm -hmm. like just kind of a simple thing like that. It, it, and she was saying like, I, I need to find myself. Th these were statements, but then like this other thing, it was like this idea that I can't even take care of myself without you know, people being upset with me is kind of the idea. Yeah. And so then if that's what your spouse is expressing, I'm going to be redundant. You're going to apply the path method to understand and get them to open up and then see how you might be able to better meet that need with them and make some adjustments there. So that then they can let go of that story of, I can't be happy here. I can't get my needs met. I'm shamed. If I try, um, it's not a good, healthy, safe situation if I try to, to get my needs met here, or I just find that my personality is I just give and give and give and give, so I just need to get away from everyone so I don't have to keep giving, <laughs> right? And so you can help them to change that story, and then when they change that story, they can see the hope and the possibility of being happy with you again. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So thank you for giving some clarity on that. And um, next week, we're going to share with you how to cope with the teeter-totter effect. If you haven't heard that term, <laughs> the teeter-totter effect, it's the going back and forth to, I want to be with you, I don't want to be with you, I'm totally in love with you, yeah, let's go on a date, to, I don't want to talk to you again, <laughs> right? Kind of the roller coaster, the teeter-totter effect. It's actually the mark of a really healthy step in reconciliation. It's not fun to go through, but we actually celebrate it and view it as a win. And so we're going to help support you guys. You asked for some help with this. Um, and again, if you're needing any more help with any of these challenges in your marriage, if you want to get to a place where you have a unified vision with your spouse, you're working together as a team to get your needs met, we encourage you to book a free call with us at highthrivecoaching.com slash apply. But thank you, Mark. And we're excited to come on next week and share with you guys how to deal with the teeter daughter effect. So thank you. And you guys have a wonderful day. See you, bro. Thanks for listening to The Thriving Marriage, your A to Z blueprint for not just surviving marriage, but thriving. Until next time, my friends, thrive on.